Hey everybody, this is George with 1v1 All Day EDH. Uh, today I'm playing Niv Mizzet Reborn, 5 color, and we're playing against Golos, Tireless Tracker. I'm going to draw 7. We have 1 land. In this deck we want a lot of land to start. 2 lands here. Uh, I don't want them all, but I think I have to for that hand. And we're just going to keep this one and not go down to four, so I will put two on the bottom. Let's do Jace and Kai's Guile, and we'll keep. So in my hand, I have Kitchen Finks, Flame Slash, Toxic Deluge, Flooded Strand, and Taiga. This deck has a lot of removal in it. So basically, the point of it is to remove any problems that we face and play get five lands out of different colors to play Niv Mizzet Reborn and then start swinging in with that. Niv Mizzet Reborn will give us, hopefully give us a lot of card advantage with its ability. So we will draw one and great we have another land. I'm just going to play Flo Flooded Strand and I'll crack it. We're playing 30 life this game. Pay one life and get We'll get Tundra. Put it on the battlefield and pass. Oops, that was a misclick right there. So his opponent is playing Golos, Tireless Tracker. Where he can cast cards without paying their mana cost. He plays a Bloom Tender and passes. I'm going to draw a card and play Taiga. And we'll pass. I've never seen this land before. Pillar of Perunes. If I control... No, only to cast multicolored spells. Interesting. So that won't work for Toxic Deluge or Flame Slash, but it'll work for Kitchen Finks. This Bastille is calling to Death Touch and Lifelink. Equip 2, that's really good. And he can have one mana right now with Bloom Tender. He has out a Savannah and a Scrub Land. And he plays a Volcanic Island for his land for a turn. He's tapping that and the Scrub Land for a Humble Defector. This is an interesting play. I see this in a lot of group of decks. Then he plays one for birds and passes. Flame Slash. Do I want to Flame Slash any of those? Hmm. Not right now. We'll save it and draw a card. So we drew a Force of Will. Which I like to see. Let's put out Kitchen Finks and get some value on the board. So when it enters, I gain two life. Gain two and pass. And it has persist. So when it dies, it will come back out with a negative one counter. He untaps, draws, plays a Wooded Bastion. And taps Birds and Bloom for Zendikar Resurgent. Probably should have Flame Slash one of his rocks last turn. But oh well. We will go ahead and play Temple Garden. And we'll have it come in. Uh, we'll have it come in untapped. No, we'll have it come in tapped. And let's do Deluge for one. Oh, that's why we had it come in. Oh, we couldn't play it anyway. So can't play Deluge because we don't have it. Let's go ahead and swing with Finks for three. Sphinx. Kitchen Finks. Tell our opponent that we're swinging. Over here I announced combat, so you see me announcing. So he's going to block with Humble Deflector. Kitchen Finks is going to die. Uh, so that's why we'll draw two cards with that. Put a negative one counter, gain two life, because it re-entered the battlefield and pass. We need another land next turn. Could scape shift and get a different color if we do get a land that we don't need next turn. He's got so much mana out right now, it's ridiculous with this Zendikar Resurgent. 
So he taps for six. He's tapping everything. This is probably an Eldrazi or Golos. Oh, he's playing Golos and activating him. I don't know why. Well, people like to play, tap their lands and then play the cards all at once. They like to tap all their lands and they'll play consecutive cards after that. And that makes it really hard for your opponent to counter. So you just got Bloodstained Mire, Badlands, Fidel Alchemist with his Golos trigger. Ability, I mean. Again, we're playing for fun, so it's not that serious, but I'd still like everybody to play to where I can be able to counter your stuff, and I'll let them know if I can. That time I couldn't, so he equips Basilisk Collar to Golos. I shook that to sh ask if it's out there, so we got our land that we needed. We'll have it come in. We will pay the two light because we want a deluge right here. Because he has too much creature value up. And we want to get the, the Zendikar Resurgent off the board too. So, what should we do? We'll try swinging with Finks. He's going to block. Oh, probably shouldn't have swung because he has a lifelink, so he's going to gain life. Finks is just going to die. But So now we'll just play the Toxic Deluge for five. Tell him five. Pay five life. Everything on his board should die. Unless he does have a Force of Will or a Pact. Kind of pact of negation. Yeah, pact of negation. Force of negation. So all his creatures die. We'll go ahead and pass the turn. Wish we had a blue card, another blue card in our hand to counter something with force. But we'll have to wait until we get the big guy out. And so for Niv Misery Reborn, you can only get one card of each color pair, so it can only be one card of any two colors, so planes like white blue, white black, white red, white green, blue black, blue red, blue green, black, red, and black green, and then red green, so any of those color combinations. And he's got what coming up? He just played Golos again with all his mana. And equip Greaves to it. So what did he pay for Golos? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's activating them right now. I think. No, he's not. So Death Touch Lifeline, Case and Shroud. Right. Take three. He'll gain three. He has so much mana out, it's ridiculous. We really needed to counter that if we could. Untap draw. What did he swing for? Uh, I thought I took three. Let's check how much damage I took. So I went, oh, 26 to 25. Only took one life. So we will go and play our scrub land. Should we do? Let's just admit it and see if we can find an answer to his Golos. So when it enters, reveal the top 10 cards. We will go to this and put 10 cards into play. Might scatter them everywhere. No, it did it in nice, neat order. So for each color pair, I don't think I get lands, but we will get Night of Autumn, Green White, Blue Red. This calculation is one color. Blue, 
red again, so we can't take that. We'll get green, blue, and blue, black. So, which do we want? Is it charm or fire and ice? Let's see. Uh, we'll take as a charm. What do we do with the rest? Rest go on the bottom. And we will pass. Seven cards in hand. asking what happened. I just didn't admit this thing. Again, one of the reasons I like untapped is because you have to communicate to your other player just like you would in a regular game of Magic. Like if you were playing in person. So t sometimes you have to argue about what really is going on and then if you still have questions you need to research the rule that you have in question. So he just activated Golos. He got Kamal Pitfighter. I'm just going to say alert right now because I might want to counter one of these. Uh, mm. Do I want to counter that? Yeah. It's worth it. I don't want him to get any farther than he is right now. Let's exile Ashia. Pay one life. This goes to the graveyard. And I'll tell him I'm countering Kamal Pitfighter. Might have a counter in his hand. And then that would be... Oh no, he doesn't. He just lets it get countered. So he got a Chromatic Lantern and a Vizier Tumbling Sands. And he applies the Swift Foot to the Vizier. Using the one floating. God, he's got so much mana out. How did he just draw? Oh, whenever you cast a creature spell. You cast one creature. So he drew with Zendikar Resurgent. And he gets a Fauna Shaman. The Mirror Charm. He's activating Golos again. And a Matsu's Augury. Never seen that card before. Oh, that's cool. For eight, though. So you get a land, and for each non-land card type, you can play it without paying your mana cost. This is probably a game right here. He just got off to a better start than we did with our five-card hand. So right now, he's looking at the top eight cards of his library with Anamatsu's Augury. He's got the game now. Oh, and he plays a niv -Mizzet. Four four fine dragon. It does stuff. Is he still looking at the top eight? Yeah. What does he do with the rest of the cards? Oh, he's got to exile it cards uh this game's getting really one-sided right now so yep he plays that let's see let's draw some cards yeah i have nothing so i'm gonna tell him good game ask him for a game too he may or may not want to play again but i will try to get all the value i can playing this guy first time playing this deck um See if he wants to do a good game. Oh, I mean, a uh, game two. <laughs> he says that must suck that I'm playing this for the first time. So let's find our commander. For some reason, it's in my deck. Throw it out there. Shuffle a couple times. 
And we'll draw two land hand. Not what I like to see. A counter target spell. This controller plays one for each basic land. Oh, I like that counter spell for this deck. We have a brainstorm and two blue sources, so we're going to keep this. Because there is a possibility to get some more lands with brainstorm. Let's gamble. Uh, I was supposed to play first, but oh well. He can have the play. Uh, pay one life. Let's not search for a land card yet because I want to see what Brainstorm gets us. Yeah, we have a Sacred Foundry, Dreadbore, so we need a Black Source, so. Deafening Clarion, we'll put Dreadbore in our hand. We'll put the land in our hand, actually, because that's more important. We'll put this one and Jace on top. Why not? Not going to think too hard about that. We pass the turn over to him. He's got a Wooded Bastion up. Must be low on land, too. Oh, he's telling me my life's still at 20. Bring it up to 30 life. We have a force of will in our hand if he decides to get too crazy. He can counter something. Pitching our other counter evasive action. Do we want Bloom Tender? Kind of got us last turn. Can we get it with something else? Can we destroy it somehow? We can destroy it with Dreadboar. Sure, we'll keep our counter. We will play Misty. Crack it. Search for our Underground Sea. Or what's a black green that the black green land uh bayou. We get a bayou, put it into play. Did we lose a life? No, we did not lose a life. And we'll pass. We'll try to counter it with our evasive action. He's cracking his scalling tarn for A tropical island. And he taps three, playing Rhystic Study. I'm alerting response. I'm going to tap two and counter Rhystic with their evasive action. First time I've ever played this card, which was awesome. Let him know to pay two. What? Counter target spell unless it's controller split. For each basic land type among lands you control. Oops, since we're just having a fun game, I'm going <laughs> to throw that out and pay one life and act like we played the Force of Will. Let's cheat. So he plays, is it Signet? <laughs> untap draw. Sacred Foundry comes in untap. We'll pay two life for that. And Deafening Clarion deals three damage to each creature. That doesn't do anything. Right now, can we play an Oath of Kaya? We can. Yeah, let's do Oath of Kaya. And then we can shoot Bloom Tender for three. And then, uh,. It will ping him for if he attacks Jace when I throw him out onto the battlefield, I mean. <clears throat> Oath of Kai is actually a good card, especially in like a Super Friends deck. He taps two for a Demonic Tutor. Tapping one green for an Arbor Elf. wonder what he fetched. Will untap draw. Not a land, which we needed. Um, we could do this, Kai's Gal. Or we could do this, I think this is the better. Play because we can get rid of his Arbor Elf. I don't want him ramping m more than me. So we'll do one at Arbor Elf. He 
because we can divide it. And we can draw a card, and then we got our land. So we'll play the Savannah and pass. So we don't have two blue sources, so we can't play Jace yet. Um, we can play Kai's Guile or Deafening Clarion on next turn. And he plays Jota. That was unexpected. Great. Britain Catacombs. We'll put that out there. Crack it. Pay one. We'll search for black or green land. Red, white, green, white. What color are we missing? Blue, red, white, green, black. So we can get Tundra. We'll put it out. What am I doing? Underground Sea. Underground Sea out there. We couldn't have got Tundra because Britain Catacombs is black or green land. And then let's go ahead and... Should we do Jace? Make him pay for it again? I think we should. It sounds fun. Target is Jota. And pass. After he returns it. <coughs> I don't like the pass before everything's done. Because I'm OCD like that. So he'll go ahead and tap 2 for Demir Signet. And I'll tap Trop and Demir for. Illusionist Bracers. Which copies abilities of creatures. Could be a triggered or an activated ability. Oh, here's the. Did we not shuffle? No, we didn't. I'm going to tell him. Even though I would have liked that Tundra. So we draw, drown in the lock. Counter target spell with CMC less or equal to the number of cards in the controller's graveyard. Oh, that's a cool counter spell. Can we destroy his Illusionist Bracers? Let's go ahead and use, Jace, use Jace's ability to draw three, Brainstorm. Hey, Oko's in this deck. I haven't played him yet. Yeah. Let's, let's put this and this back. Play... Or overgrown tomb. We'll just untap it because we have a bunch of life. Play it untapped, I mean. And we we will play green, black, or green, blue, black, green, black. Shoot. Oh, blue, green. I don't know why they gave me so much trouble. White for Oko. And let's target. His Illusionist Bracers with the plus one ability. And if he attacks next turn with the Elk, we can Swords it or we have the ability to counter one of his spells next turn as well. Wow, five color deck that I've never played before. and It's kind of cool. You just want to make sure you have your mana fixers, right? And get enough lands. So with Kai, if he attacks either of these guys, he's going to take two damage, and I'll gain two life. So he's tapping six mana for something. Could it be Golos? What could it be? I don't even know what a food token does yet. I've never used that ability with that artifact before. I'm going to spawn. How many cards does he have? Six. I have five, so let's go ahead and tap a blue and a black, and we'll put out Drown in the Lock, targeting Golos. Counter target spell with CMC less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard. So that will get countered, because it's less than seven cards. Six cards. So 
just throw a target creature. Oh wow, so it can destroy it too, but I obviously want to counter it. I don't want him entering. Wow, this card is really good. I feel like that almost should be a rare. I don't know if he's crashing or what right now, but he's taking a long time to decide if he wants to counter this or what. Oh, he's gone. So on untap, any player wants, they can just click out, exit out of the game, or close their browser, and you'll get this link, broken link, user picture. Oh, he's back. He must have crashed, or because Untap does tend to crash sometimes, or he was just so shocked to see this card. That he freaked out. <laughs> And through his computer. Uh, so we'll target his goals again and say counter. He might be just messing around now. Or he's crashing here, I don't know what. alert him a couple times that will make his end click make a clicking sound if he is still there I like to wait a little bit to see if he comes back sometimes they don't ever come back especially when they're losing yeah, this guy's link keeps breaking so apologize guys i think that's him just saying i give up but um yeah thanks for watching this game uh please subscribe see you next time